Good morning, Barstow, and welcome to another episode of Socially Distanced BTVN. I'm Jack. And I'm Erin. To start off with some announcements, we only have two weeks of school left as the last day will be Friday, May 15th. If anyone left their favorite hoodie, textbooks, or any items in their locker and has not yet picked them up, the end of the year supply pickup is taking place from May 18th to May 21st. A schedule for when you can enter the building will be sent via email. During supply pickup time, you'll also receive your yearbook. If you are a senior, your yearbook will be distributed to you by a drive through in the front circle on Monday the 18th from 7.30 to 10 a.m. If you want a sneak peek of the yearbook, make sure to watch our show on Thursday the 14th as we will be showing the yearbook video. Seniors, make sure to join the Senior Faculty Coffee on Friday for a special announcement from the yearbook staff. Maddie did an interview with Mrs. Rudman about how teaching preschool has changed with online school. Let's check it out. Okay, so I just have three questions just kind of about how online school has changed the way that you're able to teach. Sure. So my first question is, what are some of the challenges that you've been faced with since this has started? Yeah, I think the hardest part for us with teaching three, four, and five-year-olds preschool pre-K age is the social interaction. Um, it's been nice to have Zoom because we get to see them every day, um, once, twice a day, which is really, really helpful. And those kids, the kids love that interaction and seeing their friends. But it's, I mean, you know, it's not the same as seeing your kids. And a huge part of our curriculum is the social emotional piece of it where they're learning through play. So we've tried to make that as normal as possible with them. Um, a lot of them have siblings at home. So we've been having the siblings join in and help. Um, this is really a collaborative effort with the parents at this age. So the parents have been beyond helpful during this online learning. And like one of the things we did today was a science experiment and they had to make a Cartesian, Cartesian diver in a bottle. And so a lot of the parents were right there in helping them. And it felt like the kids were in my classroom, but they weren't. So we've kind of had to change it a little bit, a little bit with that. But um, Zoom has been, has been very helpful, but it is hard with not having them face to face at this age. And I know you've been doing a lot of fun activities like the um, bedtime stories and mm -hmm. um, other things. So how are you able to do some of the activities that you're able to do at school, like calendar, and what new additions have you made? Yeah, so we do our morning meeting every morning. So I um, kind of converted my basement into our classroom. So I've brought in our own calendar, our weather. So we still have our helper of the day, and we sing our song. The helper gets picked. It's really exciting. They get to do the counting, the weather. We still have our shape number. We're still doing our Jolly Phonics. So all of that is still the same. It's just, they're not sitting right in front of me on my carpet there on the computer. So, but we've tried to add a little bit of extra fun things. So we do our bedtime story every Friday night and then every day we have a different dress day. So today was Disney day. So people could all wear something different for Disney. I had Buzz Lightyear come today. And so we just have been trying to make it, you know, extra special on the computer just to have them excited to come. So I feel like our activities have have been the same. It's just a little bit different since we can't be there as much hands-on. So we rely on the parents a lot to help with that and that's been really helpful. Has there been a part of this that you enjoy or do you have any other advice for teachers or ways that you have enjoyed um, creating an engaging classroom? Um, I have to say that I would I much I would much rather be with my kiddos in my room but it has made me think outside of the box which has been helpful because sometimes I think we kind of get stuck in the same way that we do things all of the time so this has been really exciting to learn how to make a google site how to utilize different technology tools that we may not have used with three and four year olds um, we have now learned that we can do science online. We can have the kids push themselves a little more than we thought that they could. And so I think that um, it's taught me that the kids can do a lot more than we think that they can, um, even virtually. So that part has been really exciting to see what they can do, even even what they what they don't like, because we can change those things and make them better. Um, 
but the science part of it has been really fun because I thought, how are we ever going to do science and cooking on online? And it feels like they're right in our kitchen. It feels like they're sitting right there in our classroom doing it. So I think we just have to push ourselves and see, is this going to work and isn't it? And if it doesn't work, that's okay. We can learn how to do it a different way. So this has really pushed those boundaries and, and taught me how to think outside the box. It's a great piece. I love seeing all the ways people are adapting to and overcoming these bizarre times. Now let's head over to everyone's favorite trainer, T. Scott, for this week's workout. Hello Barstow. Today we're going to focus on our arms. Arms can be a challenge without any equipment at home, but I'm here to show you a few exercises that we can do to help maintain our arm strength as we continue to be away from our gyms. Let's get started. We're going to attempt 10 reps of each exercise or until failure. Our first exercise is a chair dip. The next exercise is a pike push up. Plank ups. Diamond push ups. Standing skull crushers. Reversed hand or pseudo push ups. This last exercise is a sideline bicep curl. To do this exercise, you're going to place your bottom hand underneath your knee. You're going to grip firmly. Top hands will go over top of your head. Our goal is to do a bicep curl without engaging our core muscles and using our biceps, initiating that biceps to get us up. Press cross your legs. Ten of those on both sides. I just wanted to take this moment to acknowledge our spring sports athletes who lost their season due to COVID-19, especially our seniors who are missing their final opportunity to compete with their peers one last time. We realize how much athletics mean to the total Barstow experience and our hearts go out to you all. From my family to yours, be safe and stay active Barstow. Thanks Trainer Scott. Once again, thank you to all of our spring sports seniors for working so hard and for being such great leaders on your teams. We will miss you. Well, we hope everyone has been staying active and getting plenty of fresh air throughout the day. I did an interview with Ms. Chanos over how we can stay positive and maintain a good mental health during this time. Let's check it out. So one of the first things I recommend is to limit your access to news. It can go a long way at helping avoid some of that negative overwhelm that comes from um, the media. Even though this situation is unique, um, a lot of the same rules still apply. So we want to make sure you're getting as much sleep as possible. And we also want to make sure your nutrition is as healthy and clean as you can, that you're eating um, enough throughout the day and you're not missing or skipping eating because of um, your schedule to make sure you have time, but then also to um, eat as much real food as you can, that you're not eating junk all day, um, because it really does have an impact on our mental health, um, that you're drinking enough water, sun shines really big. So get outside, go for a walk. Exercise is still really important. Even a brisk walk can have a, a very positive impact on your mental health. So it's these things we've always talked about that, you know, under normal circumstances help. And I think the only difference is it's, it's more important now to just 
make sure we're doing them because we do have the additional stress of what's happening in the world. Even though we're isolated in our homes, to try as much as you can not to socially isolate. Try to um, expand your circle or reach out to people. It's okay to not be okay right now. That this is a lot and that's okay. And I think to readjust your expectations of yourself. But if you're trying your best, but you're exhausted, a lot of that can just be because this is a really taxing time with, with stress and worry. I would say if you can practice those, um, you know, good mental health um, ways of life, it will help, but that also just be kind to yourself, that know that you're doing your best, and as long as you keep doing your best, that it's okay. It's tricky right now because I think the rules we give ourselves for screen time under typical circumstances kind of go out the window. I think you relax um, the pressure you're putting on yourself for, you know, what's too much right now. I think what I would say is if you find yourself um, stressed or anxious or um, irritable, then it's probably time to take a break. So that would be an opportunity to go outside and go for a walk or um, write or draw or something that's not on your screen. Well, that's all we have for you today. I'm Erin. And I'm Jack. Stay safe and stay healthy, Barstow. We're hopefully at the home stretch of the lockdown. So with that, have a great week, everyone.